I'm Jack Barmester and you're watching utefans.net. Hey, you fans, you're watching another great episode of The Extra Point, brought to you by the Ken Garf University Club and presented by utefans.net. I'm joined by Devin Kafusi, Cal Beck, and Robert Johnson. How are you guys doing after that big win in L.A.? Fabulous. Gentlemen? <laughs> oh, I'm awesome. I'm from L.A. I'm doing really good. <laughs> I'm from L.A. too. I'm doing pretty good. Best wins come against the Trojans, so I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I've got one question. Does Kyle Whittingham put USC on his children's list or his grandchildren's list because he is definitely their daddy? We <laughs> own USC. We will not have to listen to any USC fan try to tell us how they're better forever since we'll probably never play them again mm. or not the near or the distant future. Mm -hmm. But I, if anything, this solidifies that Utah football has not only arrived on the Pac-12 scene, but they may be a reason why some are trying to leave. What do you think? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, just beating USC, huge. Them being, you know, completely in charge of, you know, the Pac-12, um, the Blue Bloods there, us coming in, especially the end of the Pac-12, what we were saying, five straight, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exclamation point. As you know, we own USC. We own them. Who gets the game ball? I'm going to go <laughs> Bryson Barnes. I got to go with Bryson. You disagree? Uh, uh, see, and for me, it's still Colt Bishop. I'm one of those safeties, and that one play that he made where he knocked the ball up, where he was able to hit him, and the ball popped up, that could have been a huge play. But you know what? His presence was just amazing to have him back. It changed a lot of that third quarter because he was there. So I, I agree, him. but disagree with the game ball. <laughs> I am with you. I would give the laces of the game ball to Vaki. Oh, what an yeah, amazing yeah, performance, yeah. stepping into another role. I mean, who even knows how many touches he's going to get? But he said this week he's willing to do it for the team. But the game ball goes to Bryson Barnes. Some of those hits that he took, going in and getting crucial first downs and leading that offense in a tough environment against a team that had something to prove against uh, more than just a grudge against us because we've been putting the smack down on him. Bryson Barnes had an amazing game. How about Cole Becker, cool as a cucumber? <laughs> what do you guys think? Hey, ice in the vein, man. Like, he came through and he did exactly what we wanted him to do, which is show up when we need it, and on top of that, game winner. And, and the game winner back in L.A. That's, like, that's huge. You know what I thought when he was getting ready to kick that ball? I thought, ghost of Coleman Peterson, because we got blocked in the Coliseum in 2011, and I thought, come on, God, just give me this one. Just give me this one, and we got it. So what do we think about the defense's performance in this game? Devin. Huge. Uh, you know, Scally, they mentioned in the game, him always calling and how he plays it by feel and then having the players prepared to execute. And it's being relentless. We were able to see plays like that, like Cole getting around the ball, jumping on that fumble recovery. Um, Van Fillinger, D lineman pursuing, causing, that fumble, causing a fumble. It's just all, all culture plays around. Can't wait to see the cut up, especially all the culture clips. And how do we feel about the offensive production here? I mean, going into this game, we didn't expect a performance like this. I mean, hey, we got to add a safety to it. You know, that's how we get our yards. But <laughs> what I would say is that um, I'm very, very proud and happy of the offense. They showed up. They did what they supposed to have been doing. Um, we did have a couple of hiccups, you know, interceptions to the crib that we threw. But we was able to battle back, and the offense stood ground against the mighty Trojans. And on top of that, we showed up, got the win, and now we're moving on to the next week. Mm -hmm. Where is this rank? And we've had a lot of great contests with USC. In fact, Cal and I had a conversation about this because I thought um, that this was a real rivalry. And what are your thoughts on this, Cal? Is, is this a rivalry between USC and Utah? No, it's not a rivalry. And your question originally of asking where this game ranks as far as mm -hmm. wins or feel goods, like I told you all game, we were supposed to win this game. Mm -hmm. On paper, we were supposed to win. We were ranked higher, and I told you it would come down to how many yards we average per rush. If we ra averaged over two yards, we would control the clock, and as long as defense did their duties, we would be in this game in a tough environment. But no, it is not a rivalry. 
So, Devin, you played USC five times? Four, I think. We were saying. Let's, let's break it down. So, 2020, 2020 COVID. 2020, yes. And 2021. Mm-hmm. And then 20, twice in 2022, so four times. Four times, yes. So how sweet is it as a player to beat SC, like on the Utes? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Like I said, SC being, you know, kings of the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. Four years growing up, you know, they were the pinnacle of college football um, that I was watching. And being able to really come in, handle business, gritty win, coach, coach Witt uh, style, um, just the attitude of the team, defensively and offensively. It was, it's, it's, it's the best feeling to, to taking it to those LA boys. And how does this performance bode for the rest of the season? I mean, this is a huge win. We're taking on Oregon next week. What do you think, Cal? I, this has a lot of implications for the remainder of the year. We both we all had side conversations as far as what the roster might entail with this win. Uh, but I think that it continues business as usual. We'll continue to get even more healthy uh, that we saw today. We'll continue to get more healthy next week. Who knows who's going to come back when? And it just plays to our advantage. We are now something to be feared, even though we are still haven't hit our stride. We got closer to it today. Gentlemen, I wanted to ask you, the lack of defensive pressure in the first half. We talked about that four-man rush. Then we see Cole come back in in the second half, and Nate Ritchie did a fantastic job Mm -hmm. in the first half filling in for Cole. Then we see Cole come in, they start to put a little pressure. But then when we saw the pressure have to be there, long and third, crucial second and Mm shorts, they started bringing the heat. Was that a surprise? I think they were playing, yeah, I I think, Playing towards Cole's absence in the first half, I, I think, plays into that. Um, um, having him out on the field, a safety that play linebacker down the line of scrimmage, um, bring the hits, like we were mentioning, that big hit, you know, it's incomplete, but still, it sets the tone for, for where that is in the game. And that's exactly the, uh, what we'd love to see as a Utah defense. And having Cole back there, he's able to make those type of plays. Yes, yeah, and um, that's really good that you brought that up because for me, I gotta remember, I'm a fan now. So I'm sitting, I'm, I'm a fan, I'm sitting back. And like mm-hmm. for me, like looking at it, I'm like, we should blitz some more. We should send way more pressure send because, yeah, we, we should, because I felt like Caleb, Caleb Williams was uh, throwing off his back foot and he float the ball. To me, any float ball should be an interception, a knockdown, it should be something crazy. But the way that I said I'm a fan, Coach Scali is not, he's a coach. He get paid to coach. Coach Wick get paid to coach. So as a fan, you gotta sit back and kind of see things as a calculated, uh, um, what a, a chess match, you know, a uh, strategic way of moving forward with we're going to pressure when we need to. Every two-point conversion, we pressure it. It's an organic chess match mm-hmm. because the next move, you could end up with two queens on the board. You never know what's going to develop. Just like that yeah. short down distance where I kept screaming, kick for the three points on the road, tough environment, they go for the four, and all I kept teasing you the rest of the game was, wouldn't it be nice to have those three points? Mm. But you're right, we are the fans, (laughs) they are the coaches, and I hope you guys have gotten accustomed to not yelling at the TV as much (laughs) as you used to when you're on the field. It still sucks, it still sucks being on that side. (laughs) You know what's interesting is last year, uh, the game played here at Rice Eccles, 43-42, I thought, man, that's got to be the most amazing, amazingly exciting game ever played at Rice Eccles. How does this match up this year to last year? I mean, in terms of excitement, that was clutch. I mean, it's one of those things when you look at it is that U- USC is the big dog, like we keep mentioning. And then, as, then Utah is supposed to be the, oh, we just fell into the Pac-12. But now it's starting to show that we can battle with the, with the bigs and we can show that we're not just one of those teams. We're a dominant team. And to see what the offense did tonight and see what we did, to me, it's like we're finally hitting our stride at the right time of the year because we're going to run into some of these tough games. But it's a lot of people that scared of SC. So for us to get this win, they better start fearing us and start thinking like, hey, Utah is not something to just play, uh, not a, not a what, what they say, a, 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 rat, I mean, a trap game mm-hmm. or, or a walkover game or what, that, what I was reading on the internet that says something about what USC was feeling about this game as in um, um, a, a Make, make the game better or something, or like this is like we're going to make a feel-good game out of this. It's like, wow, really? That's how y'all feel about us? Mm-hmm. So it shows now that we're dominant in there. They were looking <laughs> to bounce back, and they fell flat on their face. Uh, we have proven that we are not just a good football team. We are a great football team, and we can recover from bad situations or bad mistakes or bad mishaps, mm-hmm. which happen in football. It was a huge win, to answer your question. I think it was bigger than the one last year simply because it was down there. No And kidding. that's a hard place to win. But the greatest game, come back in, 
Rice Eccles is Air Force 95. <laughs> nah, I'll say TCU 2008. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Wazoo in 2020 was pretty crazy. <laughs> okay. 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 So key plays from the game, Cal Beck. Uh, Vaki's run, obviously, to set that first pass, that swing pass when they motioned him out of the backfield and they saw that it was uh, one-on-one coverage with the linebacker. He just scooted away from it. Uh, that was huge. Vele's catch was huge. J- JJ's overall game. Uh, I mean, he averaged over five mm-hmm. yards to carry. He was doing fantastic things in the backfield. I think that he is – um, some of his downhill plays were the play of the game, uh, but those sacks, we needed sacks, we needed pressure, and mm-hmm. they came up when I least expected it with just a four-man rush. So play of the game would be one of the sacks that we ended up getting in Caleb. What about that run by Barnes? Was it 26 yards at the end there to set up the field goal? Yeah, dude was running for his life. Oh. Yeah, I mean, to me, I mean. He needs to learn how to slide. Oh <laughs> I'm a lay person when it comes to football. I am strictly a fan. I never played a snap of football, but to me, that's the play of the game. I mean, that's I can see play. why you it's, designated it's a good play. Yeah. I, I, I would agree, just maybe just that whole two-minute drill at the end. Yeah. Trying to get to the field goal. Like I said, they landed for field goal. We're going for it. Miscommunication. They, you know, were able to, Bryce was able to line it up, make it easy for Cole in that run before that he had. Just executed, staying cool, staying in the fight, coming out with the win. And can we just talk about what a story Bryson Barnes is? I mean, we were introduced to him in the Rose Bowl in 2022, throws a touchdown pass to Dalton Kincaid, keeps the game close, and look at the odyssey he's been as a player. And, he, and people have counted him out. And he goes down to the Coliseum and has that kind of game. I just have to throw some love out to Bryson Barnes if you're watching. I'm a big fan. What do you guys think? I mean, that story, it's a great story. He is undefeated as a starter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you told me that. That right there is proof in the pudding. Like, he's undefeated as a starter. Mm -hmm. Beyond all of the things that he talked about when we had him on the show last year, Mm -hmm. beyond all of the things that we've learned, him getting earning the scholarship this year, him going to the hospital in Pullman, but after the Wazoo game and getting on on the plane to come back, like, you want to talk about grit and perseverance. Our team embodies it. He is the hood ornament at this point of that grit and that perseverance. Well, the U is flashing tonight on Mount Van Cott. How happy we are about that. And the Trojans are very, very sad. We'll be right back after a message from our sponsor, the Ken Garf University Club. The Ken Garf University Club in Rice Eccles Stadium is Utah's premier social club. Members enjoy incredible dining experiences, co-working spaces, exclusive member events, and fun game experiences like tailgating, pep rallies, and watch parties. Membership starts as low as $80 a month and is actively accepting new memberships. To learn more about joining this beautiful club, go to KenGarfUniversityClub.com to learn more. Welcome to Goal on Gossip this week, uh, proudly presented by UteFans.net. Today we've got the big fella, Mikey Matthews, on. How are you, mate? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. good. Just fresh off the training track. How are you feeling? Feeling good, man. You know, long season, but we're we in the mix of it, so we just got to keep going. Yeah. Heading down to California this week, obviously the home state. I know you and a few of the Cali boys are pumped up, so give us, give us your thoughts on that. I got a lot of people coming. I got 18 tickets, so yeah. it's going to be a big like little little section for me, but I'm excited to play in the Coliseum. And you're originally from pretty close to there? Or? Yeah, Mission Viejo, so like 30, 40 minutes away. Yeah. How's life at a top 20 school playing as a freshman? It's good, man. I really can't complain. You know, uh, Utah's a beautiful state, so you got everything. Got all, all four seasons here, and then, you know, just playing football with all you guys is very fun, winning games, so you really can't complain. Yeah. What made you choose Utah, I guess, over, uh, over the competitors? What, what drew you to the state of Utah? Um, probably just, like, the winning culture. I hate losing, so um, how to come to a winning team, and then for sure the coaching staff is very just consistent, you know, um, very genuine. And just um, wanted to play with Cam. Yeah. So hopefully get to play with Cam soon. Yeah, yeah. And you played rugby when you were little mm-hmm. or younger. How does that, what, why the change and how's that translated over um, into football? I feel like rugby just helped me out a lot. Just being able to um, see the field differently, you know, just being able to make different cuts from a rugby like point of view than a football point of view, if that makes yeah. sense, you know, because rugby and football obviously is different, just like the way you play the game, but. Um, it just helps me to see the field differently from, like, I feel like that just helps me, like, get an advantage, I feel like. I don't really know how to explain it, but, um, but football helped. I mean, rugby has helped a lot, though. Yeah. How do you go, like, rugby? Obviously, you don't wear the pads and the helmet. 
how do you go putting the helmet on with the peripheral vision? And... Oh, uh, I wish, I mean, the pads for sure add a little bit of weight, but um, the helmet, I just feel like people just feel like they're invincible, so like, yeah. so they can just come flying at you and just hit you, but um, rugby is just nice because they have to tackle right, so you're not really getting, you, you're obviously getting hit hard, but you're not getting hit, like, with someone's head, you know, so it's like yeah. your real shoulder into like your stomach or something like that. So what's it like when you're on the field and the other team's punting and the ball's up in the air? What What's it like with the coverage team bearing down on you? Uh, you know, I gotta make split decisions, so I can't think about it too much, but um, definitely from coming from high school to college and being like a punt returner, it's definitely like a game change, like a very big change. Yeah. You got people coming full speed and like these are D1 athletes, like mm -hmm. they're obviously on the field for a reason, so they all make tackles. So I just, um, you just gotta be able to make split decisions and just go with your decision and just be right. Is this, I, I never played high school ball, but is the speed much different? Oh yeah, way, way faster. Yeah. Just way faster, everyone's bigger. Yeah. Playing rugby helped me because I played fullback. Yeah. So that's literally all I did was just retrieve kicks when they when they would kick it. I just retrieve them and then take it back and either kick it back or run it back. Yeah. Who do you who do you reckon you model your game after the most? Um, from a receiver point, probably um, I would say Stephon Diggs. Really, I, I like yeah. him a lot. I always just watch him. He's not too big, not too small though, but he's a good route runner. What's the toughest thing? from transitioning from high school football to college, and I guess from California to Utah, that you didn't anticipate? Like, what do you what do you think's the toughest? Was uh, it leaving mom's home cooked meals on? The that, for sure, my, my mom's home cooked meals for sure was hard, uh, but the intensity, like, yeah. the intensity, like, it caught me off guard. Obviously, like, I knew it was intense, but like, like I feel like the intensity is just like another level, just, yeah. like, <laughs> if you mess up like one thing, you're about to get chewed out, you yeah. know? So like, you really gotta pay attention to detail and just, don't make a mistake, really. Yeah. Intensity was a big one that caught me off guard. Running? Yeah, do you love running? Um, did you do track? I did track. Yeah? Yeah, I ran 100, 200, 4x1, and 4x4. But running is just, I mean, I wouldn't, like, do it just because, but I got to do it because I have to, you know? Like, I gotta, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I got to run. So. Did you play any other sports apart from rugby? And... Uh, did football, rugby, track, and then I played basketball. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then decided to go to football. Yeah taking football as far as I can and then I'll just probably just go back to rugby for, for sure. Yeah? Yeah. Wait, don't you have a, you have a brother that plays rugby in mm -hmm. Utah as well, right? No, he plays in NOLA. Or he, uh, he plays oh, yeah, New Orleans, yeah. 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 NOLA goes, so he plays in the MLR, not NOLA. Yeah, is that pretty big or? Mm, the MLR's pretty big, like it's getting bigger in the States. Yeah. There's a lot of teams in the States actually, and I know they got one here. I know they got, I've Utah. seen the one in LA. They're yeah, playing the, the Guiltinis, yeah, they're good, they're good. Yeah. Uh, no, the one in here, I think it's the Warriors. I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah, Utah Warriors. They're solid, and then, but there's a lot of teams though that that are like coming in the States now, so yeah, starting to grow a lot. So you're a true freshman and you're starting. What's it like being a true freshman? I guess you probably, once you get on the field, you don't really feel like a freshman. Yeah, you, I don't really think about it too much, but you know, like when people like text me about it and all that, it's just like, yeah, like, I got here in January and like I was like planning on, I was really trying to start as a true freshman. So yeah. that's like my main goal. And um, getting here in January helped me a lot, just being able to get through spring and like, make all my, my errors, like to put the playbook and like yeah. detail stuff and get all that over with. And then when fall camp came around, I was able just to lock in again and just be able to do what I do and just play fast. And yeah. But it's, it's fun though, being able to play as a true freshman. Not a lot of people can say that, so I'm truly blessed. And just very, just taking every day by day for him. Just. How about Coach Witted? He's, a, he's probably the one that I speak to one of the least. And I, every, every interaction I've had with him has been great. Yeah. Um, he looks like a pretty genuine coach and you seem to get along really well. Let's speak about your relationship and how he helps you on the field and stuff like that. Uh, he's a great, great coach. He knows what he's talking about. He um, coached with the Packers for a little bit. So he coached yeah. Devontae Adams, Alan Lazar. So he coached some good receivers. And then, so he definitely knows what he's talking about. So it's nice just being able to pick his brain and just be able to see like what he sees from a coaching aspect and just being able to help me and just understand like defense is better and coverage is better because he just, like, I know we used to sit down a lot and just go over coverages because when I'm playing slot, like, I got to be able to, like, know the coverage before, just be able to, uh, that's how I run my routes, just based on coverages. So yeah. He's helped me out a lot, though, yeah. for sure. He's a great dude. What's your favorite route to run? Um, Which I'd one like, do you know you're going to get the ball on? Choice routes, for real. Yeah. Like, just like how Cubby ran when he was here, just being able to read coverage again, just being able to get open. Yeah. Yeah. Able to use our quickness and manipulate defenders really yeah. nice. 
really and the big fella is pretty quick as well. You can you can uh, manipulate some defenses. Yeah, break them, put them on skates is nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know NFL is your obvious aspiration, but what do you want to what do you want to do with your life apart from not apart from the league? What do you want to do? Uh, I major in a communication, so I'm trying to get like sports broadcasting. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Just... You should take my spot. No, <laughs> this is your sign. But I'd probably do something like that, like ESPN or something. Like yeah, that. that'd be pretty. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Sideline reporter. Something like that'd be pretty cool. Send to it do. down to Mikey. <laughs> But what's your most favorite play? Well, most memorable play this year? Uh, so far, probably the Baylor one when I had a choice shot again. Oh, yeah. And I was able to just like, isolate him and manipulate him, get him on skates and yeah. break in. Had that big first down, and it was like, I think it was like second. Did that hurt when they hit you? Uh, when I ran a slant and got yeah, that last Baylor, one, yeah. <sighs> man, I was, I was hurting. <laughs> but um, other than that, they, they just never hit for yeah. I've been getting hit. It was so, too hot anyway. Yeah, yeah, it was like too hard and like it happened so fast, and you just yeah. gotta get back. But, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> Can't really like think about it too much. <laughs> what's your favorite thing about being a U or being in Salt Lake City? What do you what, what sticks out the most? Uh, favorite thing about being a U is obviously being able to play football in Rice Echo Stadium. It's always real nice, you know. Um, but favorite part, like our favorite thing in being in Utah, is probably just being able to like the mountains, seeing the mountains and all that. Yeah. I feel like I'm a big like scenery guy, so just being able to like see like the nature and like it's pretty cool. The practice fields are the practice amazing, field, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, especially like it's a hard practice, bro. Just look at the mountains and yeah. be like. Man, <laughs> I'm Jack Bermista. And I'm Mikey Matthews. And you're, and you're watching UFans.net. It's a community coming together to support University of Utah student athletes. It's our town, it's our team. Our town, our team. Crimson Collective, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. We're in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Crimson Collective, our town. Our team. Welcome back, you fans. So next man up, Robert Johnson, sound off. Yeah, to me, um, that's one of the biggest things that we have here at the University of Utah, and uh, Coach Witt pushes it. One of the biggest things is that next man up. So no matter what happens, if a player get injured or a player don't show up, he always say the game continues, next man up. So the way that we train, and we have all of us has been there, where it has been – the biggest thing is that you will get your chance. And Coach Wood has always said, a play will happen and you will make a play. But the next man up is one of the biggest things that we have. Cal. Hey, look, practice makes. Per perfect? No, permanent. Nobody's perfect <laughs> except my grandma and you look nothing like that. <laughs> practice makes permanent. What you practice will become permanent habit. And what Utah has done, a la Coach Whittingham, is they have established a culture where you wait for your opportunity mm -hmm. because you never know when your number is going to get called. I teach my young athletes and my students opportunity knocks sometimes so lightly that if you're not listening, you'll miss it. And unfortunately, a lot of our players on the roster have gotten that knock on their door for opportunity, some on both sides of the ball. Fortunately, they practice, they play like they practice, and it's become permanent habit, and they've stepped up. We, we were just discussing a little bit about the injury side of it, but I'm willing to hear about your next man up as well. Absolutely. It's something I learned transferring over from down south was that mentality Ooh. and that attitude was next man up. It kept everyone honest. No matter your role on the team, you put yourself in that position. You're really only one, two injuries away to where you're the one either making plays or being embarrassed on the field. And everyone in college football, especially for fans that need to know, is everyone plays hurt. Everyone's wincing. What Coach Witt does, don't wilt. You know, don't fade away. Don't melt in the heat. Stay tough. Stay a Utah man. And like I said, Bryson Barnes showed that, playing with that sternum injury, lowering the shoulder in that last drive. True grit right there. So, Devin, you touched on it a second ago. Tell us about playing hurt. Oh, uh, you know, it's the nature of the sport. It's, it's what you got to understand. understand. It's, it's what we always talk about, especially playing uh, when I moved in as a defensive tackle. You know, there's a lot of violence and physicality in, in that world down there in the trenches. And um, as you are as an athlete, you know, you want to be the strongest. You know you're the fastest, but you, you have those excuses that you can have that are true. But it's a team sport. And seeing the whole team come together and rally, um, that's places that I've been there. Um, it's places where I've been able to step up and help teammates when they're, when they're hurt um, because everyone's sacrificing for the greater good of the team, which is ultimately a big win. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cal, you know what it's like to play hurt. Yeah. So does Robert. Mm -hmm. So I mean, playing hurt's not 
a question or an issue, especially at this level. If you can get on the field and benefit your team with making plays, they'll put you in a position to do that. They're not going to let anybody play who's too injured, and there's a difference between being hurt and injured. Mm -hmm. That's too injured to contribute to the team's goals on the field. If not, they, it would hinder the progress. But I remember playing it, the Freedom Bowl. I hurt my leg on opening kickoff. I had a big gashing wound on it, ended up having one of my greatest games. I can think back in my history of my athletics, and I had some of my great performances while I was injured and or sick mm. because it took my mind off of that, and I was just worried about competing. Have you guys ever had that situation where you've been injured or hurt or ill to the point where you ended up balling out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's like part of like we were just saying, it's part of being an athlete. And like I teach my kids right now is like either you hurt or you injured. If you hurt, you're fine. You know, just you'll be good. Don't worry about it. But if you injure, then we gotta go to the, we gotta go to the doctor. You know, we gotta really like figure out what's going on. And when you're playing football, the one I, the the way the way I look at it is that if you don't have any injuries, then you're not helping the team. You ain't right playing the game right. You're not helping the they team. Do. You're pretty much um kind of you're working for the other team. That's how I always look at it. If you have injuries, you're doing what you need to do to be a student athlete, and you're doing what it is to be um, just in sports, and that's not just football. That's all sports. Being hurt is part of the game, but being able to get through it mentally and being able to show some of your best games when you're injured, it makes you get to that different level of understanding Division One football or Division One student athlete in general. So I just want to touch really quickly on Oregon coming to Rice Eccles next weekend, they're good. I mean, there's no question. That they're a very good. Very good team. Uh, I'd say better than the SC team we played tonight. Yeah. Do you guys agree? Possibly. Yeah, maybe. So what are your predictions for this next uh, game against the Ducks? Uh, I'll go first on this one. What I would say is that if our fans can show up and do what they supposed to have been doing, the MUS, the University mm. of Utah, hey, the state of Utah, I'm about 100% sure we can get this win if we're at home, if we have the fans there, because we get the, we get the stadium rocking. <laughs> and I'm not too far removed from believing that our third down efficiency on defense mm -hmm. is in part due to the stadium atmosphere and the fans yelling on first down and on third down, causing those penalties and being a part of the atmosphere. People hate playing here mm -hmm. for a reason. Our defense just showed that they can shut down a prolific air attack or, and or ground attack like today. Mm -hmm. So Oregon's going to come in here all guns a blazing. The game plan is going to be somewhat similar. If we can rush the ball for over two yards of carry and chew the clock, we put ourselves in a position to play because our defense is going to cause turnovers and mm. make plays. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how much the offense can continue to grow in the week off. Absolutely. Or in the next week. Absolutely. By all my confidence, it doesn't matter who's coming to play. If it's here in Rice Eccles, we'll handle business. It's electric here. Um, all the time, be, being a post athlete, I get asked, where's the loudest stadium? You know, loudest moments. There are some loud moments at stadium, but from start to finish, Rice Eccles is the most alive and loudest stadium. So fun to play in, especially as a defensive player. We love being at home. Can't wait to eat some duck. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> so, you fans, thanks for watching another great episode of The Extra Point presented by UFans.net. Check us out on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Apple Music. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And go Utes. Go Utes. Uh.